Hey everyone, Sam here. What I think is becoming more important now than, than it ever has um, around how to improve your data skills. Now, one of the, one of the things that I've been diving into a lot more in recent months is uh, is Python, my Python skills. Uh, one One of the reasons why is because a lot of the AI systems, all of the AI automations that are being de uh, being developed and being tested right now, they're all being run with Python code, right? And so I, re I realized this a while ago, and I've been diving into it a lot more than I ever have in the past, because I think it's just a incredibly versatile skill that is going to enable you to personally increase your value and also do a lot more. That, that is, that is absolutely true in my mind right so i've been, i've been expanding my horizons a lot recently and i and i really i really believe you should as well and if you haven't done much with python previously i really recommend it you know i've been diving into a lot of brand new things that you can do with ai particularly with ai agents it's all happening in python everything right the ability to write code execute code automatically do this on loops it's it's incredible what is what is possible now and what is going to be possible in the future i don't know exactly the direction it's going to go but all i know is that a lot of this is being done within python and having a really solid understanding of how python works is crucial right one thing i'll say before we dive into this uh, google colab notebook is that you can um, you can do a lot without knowing how to write python code all you need to know it is more like how to operate it, how to use it, right? And there's a whole range of tools now that can help you, you know, create the code, understand the code, understand errors, whole whole range of things, right? And you know, that's what I'm my plan on show, showcasing to you a bit more today. So, okay, how do we get started? Now, I'm just going to do some simple analysis. We're going to build a simple notebook in Google Colab here. And the reason why we're doing a notebook here, and you know, and this is a bit different to say doing something in Excel or doing something in Power BI. But there are some some real benefits to using these tools, even if they're not the end product that you want to create. They can, with the help of, get you some, enable you to do a lot of like exploration around your data quite quickly, which I find very, very useful actually. And so a couple of, uh, a, maybe like an hour or two spent within here before you actually do anything within a report or, or, or within, other analysis that you do, it actually, I think, can make a big difference, right? Okay, so what I did, we've got some transportation data here. I just created this. It's a totally random data set. I generated it uh, initially through ChatGPT a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and for me to just start off my analysis, I just put the data into our Edna AI chat experience here, right? Okay, so this is this is our own one. This is the one that we've created through Enterprise DNA, but you can put this in anything. I mean, you can put this in ChatGPT, you can put this in Gemini, you can put it in Copilot, you can put it in, put, put this sort of thing anywhere. I'm using our environment because I just like it because I built it exactly how I, I want to use it, right? So I just gave it an abstract of the data, okay? So... I didn't actually give it too much. I just said, I give it an abstract and I said, here are the columns in my data set. This is not the actual data. I want you to give me analysis. The reason why I'm doing it like this is because I know there's a lot of data security issues. No one wants to you put, no one wants you to put your entire data set into these AI systems. Well, don't just put a subset, put in like one row, two rows, at least give it the data structure. I don't see any data security issues with that. And you can still do a lot or learn a lot uh, on data, which is relevant to you. If you really can't even put like a row or two, go and just put the columns in and get a random data set created by ChatGPT around those columns and then put it into these into the system. And this is still going to give you the, the right code, the right ability, abilities to find good analysis, right? Okay, so here's some analysis based on your data set. So route performance. Okay, so let's... So I'm just going to go through a few of these to, to, to create some analysis. I did actually create a, lot, a bit of analysis before, you know, what I've already like, actually what I've already done is I've already loaded the data into, into Google Colab. So this is some code that enables you to do that right here. Right. And I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So I've loaded it in, I've taken the file from my computer and I put it into the Google Colab environment. It's built what's called a data frame around that. 
and then I've already run some statistics. So these summary statistics, right? Like these can take some time to do elsewhere, but literally with one line of line of code here, which I, I just got out of um, our AI system, it, and it gave me all the um, summary statistics on a whole range of key attributes of the data. So total passengers, distance traveled, how many stops, um, fuel consumption. Okay, so if we just look at the mean, uh, each route has 50, on average 50 passengers in the mean, 27 Ks is the average distance traveled, average stops is 16, and the average fuel consumption is 55 liters by the looks of it. I think that's how we can read it, right? So, yep, cool. Okay, so quick and easy to get that information. I might actually, I might actually delete some of this stuff and we'll just start from scratch, right? Cool, okay. Really easy to use Google Collab, it's so intuitive. You're, just, you're literally just building one piece of analysis on top of the other. And you can do that by using code here. You can also add text very easily here. So above shows the summary stats of our transportation data. So simple things like that. Okay, and then I can just click this and that embeds it in, and then I can put some more code below here. Okay, right. The data frame is already available as DF. Okay, so I'm just going to say that we've already got a data frame which has a variable of df so don't recreate anything okay okay so sure you can calculate the average number of passengers per route using the python's lib the pandas library sorry here is the code snippet okay average passengers per route okay so let's copy this across okay so all i have to do is copy this in here cool so there's a lot of routes right so um so so this is just giving us an idea. So 100. Okay. So let's let's move on to the next one. So determined the total distance traveled per route. Same thing. Now this insights. To determine the total distance traveled per route in Python, use a pandas library. Okay, so again, let's just come in here. Distance, uh, total distance per route. Okay, and then I can just go play. Cool, okay. Here's a little tip for you as well. Here's a little cool thing that we uh, you can do inside of here. What we have embedded into, into here, which is quite cool, is that you can click one click and go to the code explainer. So if you want to get a little bit more detail, see so it's not very descriptive here, I can go code explainer like this. It will paste that data in here automatically and then i can go just run and it will give me more detail about the specific code i could also copy and paste this by the way but we'll just try to make it really really quick so calculating total distance traveled per route the code provided blah, 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 blah. it assumes the is installed the code groups the data frame by the column route id this operation creates groups okay cool so this is how we can learn quite quickly right this is this is so powerful. Like if you just say, if you think before even we had any AI system, like before we even had chat GPT, I mean, you would just be stuck in forum hell trying to learn all this stuff, right? Like it's just crazy. It's crazy how much quicker it is. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Now what I want to do, um, I want to actually calculate, I want to calculate, I want to calculate something quite simple. Um, now I just want to show in a uh, column chart the total passengers per month and year okay let's see what it comes up with here okay so matplotlib is is going to be our visualization library assuming the date is in date yep okay let's give this a whirl let's give this a whirl and see what it comes up with Okay, it hasn't just, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, but I, I actually wanted it like month and year, but in, anyway, it's still, it's still giving us some, we just need to adjust the, 
the inside a little bit. I mean, this is not going to be some sort of final product I show anyone. So I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Let's just uh, find some other, some other insights here. Can you now show me the total fuel consumed per month in a column chart? Um, please show each unique month side by side. Side. <clears throat> I think it's done exactly the same thing, but let's just have a look. Cool. Okay. So this is a little bit annoying that it's not, not in the format I want. Okay. But if, the, if we, if we do have this, right, if we do find this, what you can do is I want to change this code around, right? So, um, Uh, actually, formula fixer. Let's let's use this. Okay, I'm going to type in the code. I want to show this as month and year, not month and year with each column next to each other and the same size. Not the the, is it the x-axis to the month and year? Okay, let's see what it comes up with. So th these are just some simple tools that we've created that you can use. Okay, let's just see. Let's just see if this improves. All right, that you can use to here's this corrected code, um, and let's see what this comes up with. So. So you imagine having to write all this code out. It's just terrible, right? Okay, cool. Finally got what we wanted. Okay. So just a few quick things you can, you can use. Now, if I want to learn a little bit more about this, then I can just quickly come to the code explainer. Boom, like that. And then I'll get a detailed description of how this was actually created. This, this is how I am learning Python. Okay. This is, how, this is how I'm learning, whether it's just simple analysis, but if it, I'm just, I'm just literally plugging myself into into all sorts of new ways I can learn, right? And like this, this just gives me a whole new dimension to how fast I can learn things. Okay, now what are some things we can round off here with? Um, let's do something a little bit more complex, right? Investigate correlations between fuel consumptions and distance travel. Okay, let's let's. I want code to complete um, this analysis, please. Okay, so just popping this in here. Aha. Okay, so we've got an we've got an issue, right? So this is here's a little little tip for you. This is what I this is what I've been doing. I can go to error evaluation, like the error the. I mean, you, you, I mean, you can pop this into anyone, but this this is a new a new tool that I created just so that I can quickly try and understand what these errors are. The user encountered because what you find, like what you find, like these these are just hopeless. I mean, they're so hard to understand what is going on. So I mean, just look at that; it's confusing, right? So trying trying as best we can to um, you know just give simple explanations, right? Corrected code with comments. Okay, so let's just try out this new code. Ah, uh, okay. It didn't actually load the data in, did it? Well, that's running. Let's have a look here. So, yeah, okay, correct. Good. Ensure the data frame is loaded and contains the columns. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, 
Okay, so this is just a little bit of debugging that we need to do. Okay, so this is this is where you know you can get a little bit stuck, but like honestly, trust me, when you're using Google Colab, like just working through, like what I've done, like working through errors is just part of the process. It's just part of the process. So nothing ever works in first go round, right? <clears throat> so let's just try and understand what's going on here. So the user encountered a key error when trying to create a subset of the data frame. It's probably because we haven't actually selected columns. Yeah. Okay. The error message says that the columns mentioned do not exist. Oh, it's because they're actually named differently, right? Yeah, it's because they they are named differently. That's why. Okay. Please redo with the correct column names from below. That's why. That's why. It must be. Must be. Must be. Let's have a look. Okay, cool. So it's just creating a, uh, a heat map. Seeing is, is there a correlation between distance traveled and fuel consumption? Yes, there is, because it's zero. It would be minus, right? It would be minus if there wasn't one. Okay, cool. <clears throat> right. I'm going to wrap. I'm going to wrap. And I'll do more of these. I'll do more of these. Like, I'm, I'm going to start doing a lot more of these because there's, there's a reason behind this, right? I, as I've been digging into this new framework called AutoGen from Microsoft is so much of the AI agent workflow of like automating analysis is being done with Python, right? And so the more we can just become familiar with how this actually works, the more we will be able to understand what the automations are doing in behind the scenes. That is, that is the big reason why I'm diving into this more and more and more, right? And I'm put, you know, I'm 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 really testing myself. I'm doing things that I haven't really done a lot of before, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna master them. I'm gonna master them by just repetition and I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it along the way. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up and yeah, I'll I'll be putting out a lot more content about this and around this. So so keep watch out and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.